Hello there and welcome to the latest edition of Live Music and Me, the music podcast where we ask some of our friends to come on and talk about their gig memories over the years. Uh, today's guest is the Scottish singer, songwriter, musician and producer, Daniel Wiley. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy this one. All the best now. Daniel, hi, how you doing, sir? Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm back. I'm here. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I don't want to lose you there. Hey, no, we've got all this technical stuff worked out. We have. Yeah, that's, yeah. We've, ticked, we've ticked the first box off. Are you ready yeah. to have a go at live music with me? Yeah, go for it. Good man. Okay, right. So the first gig that you went to? Um, do you know, the first actual gig I went to was involuntary, and it was <laughs> um, Nana Muscuri. <laughs> At Kelvin Hall, accompanying my auntie, who dragged me along uh, for company, I think. But it was a thoroughly enjoyable show, And but I don't count it. The real one was when I was 14, when I saw The Suite at Glasgow Apollo. Right. And they were supported by a band called Salvation, who right. were fronted by Majura. Of course. Uh, just yeah, before yeah, he went yeah. through the band Slick and Slick. had a big yeah. With, I can't remember the title of the song, but Forever and Ever. Forever maybe. and Ever, with the bells and stuff. Yeah, with it. yeah, yeah. 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 Ding, yeah. <laughs> so, Nana Muscuri, you're, bl- you're blaming your gran for Nana Muscuri, are you? Ma- one of my aunties took me. Your auntie, right. Yeah. So she would have been big at the time, I guess. That was she'd number Nana one. Muscuri, stuff, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she, I think she'd, uh, she'd have her own TV show and BBC right. and stuff like that. Yeah. And believe it or not, a lot of your music's pretty good. Yeah, I bet, yeah. It's a bit Demis Russos, but then some of his music's good as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how good with the suite? Fantastic. Mm. This, the show started and you know, what age was I? 73 years, maybe 14. And, uh, what happened was we were sitting reading the Sunday Mail, a friend of mine, I mean, uh, and do you know they used to have the adverts in the back pages who was appearing to the poll? Yeah, yeah. And we were yeah. bored and we spotted it. Tonight, live, the sweet tickets are on sale. So I said to my parents, I want to go and see the street. Yeah. And they were like, oh, and they gave us money for the cheapest tickets. So me and my friend, Eddie Maguire, went up to that poll and we got to the the box office and all that. we don't have any of the cheapest tickets left so we thought we weren't getting in right and it turned around and because we were going my wee brothers and my wee sister moaned the face off my parents that they wanted to go as well and right. they were behind us in the queue and they gave us the extra money to get ah, in so we went in together my parents went to see the suite oh, i cannot believe that to this that's day. wonderful Absolutely and uh, the wonderful. show started Embarrassingly, so the show started with a like a countdown of the stripper, 10, 9, 8, and it's like, they're all taking off a close 10. Do, 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 do. And when it gets to one, and she's just about to take a brow, yeah. it just goes, yeah. and it was like flashing lights, and it was like, wow, and it was into blockbuster. blockbuster. Like, yes, this is brilliant. Oh, man. Stuff the football, I'm going to gigs for now. Oh, that's mad. That's wonderful. You know what? What, what year would that have been? 1973. 73 14. or so. Brilliant. Never saw the suite. You know, absolute props Brilliant. to you for that, mate. Great wonderful. Great musicians as well. Ah, a great so, band. Dutch Slade, weren't they? They're a proper band. Yeah, you know, so. I saw them as well. <laughs> wonderful. That's a great start. Uh, what about the last gig that you went to? Um. Oh, God. What was the last? The last name band I went to see was Fleet Foxes. Okay. I've got tickets to see The Smile, you know, Tom York's new band, yep. coming up in March. You know, the, the, who else have I seen recently? I've not been doing a lot of gigs recently. I've been gigged out. You know that time you, you get this phase in your life when you feel, God, yeah. all I've done is go to gigs. I went to see um, Danny George Wilson, who in Grand, was in Grand Drive. And no. Danny and the Champions of the World, you don't know them, they're no. a great alternative country band. They were signed to RCA. In fact, I've just written a song, uh, co written a song with him for his next solo album on Loose Records. Okay. Um, I think Jerry Love plays bass on a couple of ah, tracks right. in that last one. And Jeff Tweedy's on his last album as well from Wilco. Wow. So, him and I have written this song. It sounds like something from. After the Gold Rush or Harvest by Neil Young. That's nice. really good. 
Really, really good for that. Looking forward to him getting in and recording it. Absolutely. And how? Um, where did you see the Fleet Foxes? Sorry, the Fleet Foxes. Uh, Fleet Foxes are so down at the one in the Gorbals. What's it called? I can um, never remember. Citizens. Uh, no, no, the O two Academy. Aye, the O two Academy. Aye. Um, what's amazing is it wasn't even sold out for a band like Fleet Foxes. Yeah. And I'd seen them a few times before, and they were amazing. They've always been great life. So yeah. No, I, like I did see them a few years ago, I think, when it was a, the kind of original band, when they were all still yeah. on it, but uh, I haven't yeah. seen them for a long time, so. Yep, cool. good band. No, very good band, very good band. Okay, so what about a, a sort of bucket gig in the past that you wish you'd been able to get to? One that I missed? Yeah, a big iconic gig um, that, you know, you'd have probably, went to Probably, you know, I've seen most of my heroes, but I'd like to have seen Joni Mitchell, mm -hmm. you know, in her prime anywhere, I, you know. It's one of those ones, you know, that you've missed it and it's not going to happen again, ever. Yeah. So I suppose it is a bucket list thing. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, she's obviously yeah. she's back in reasonable health again and playing. Yeah, so I guess, true. who knows, yeah. you know. But seeing her when know, she was young in her prime, you know, and kicking out at the time. Obviously, the, the Beatles would have been great without the Screaming Girls, maybe around <laughs> 1969 or 70. Yeah. Um, Mostly I've seen a lot of the people right. I would love to see. You know, and yeah, it, it, it's one of those ones that I've been quite often in a privileged position and yeah. got to meet a lot of them and stuff like that as well. So I've seen Elvis Costello more than anybody so That's many one times. Of my, one of my questions. I don't, so have, I I don't have to see him again because um, I've seen him over 20 times and it's like... I've met him three times and he can never remember meeting me the time before. Right, okay. <laughs> and what, what's, what's your love of Costello? Why why so many um, times live? Well, I bought his first album in 1977. I'd be 18. My aim is true. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to see his first ever gig in Scotland with the attractions in Paisley Silver Threads Hotel in 1977. Right. And then eventually, through the years, I've seen him so many times, met him backstage a couple of times. My mate did a TV show with him and got me to meet him. And then uh, I was going to an award ceremony for Q magazine in mm -hmm. London. Mm -hmm. And I was playing a festival in, in Holland. And uh, I got a phone call from our manager who said, you know, you and McGee, you and Alan McGee and Stephen for the band were going to the Q Awards. Yep. And he's like, you'll never guess who's sitting at your table. <clears throat> no one's like, who, who? He said, it's a big hero of yours. And I went through a couple of people. I thought, it's no Peter Gabriel, was it? Man? Right. And eventually it, it turned out it was Elvis Costello. Wow. So I spent the night getting pissed with him. And yeah. it was great fun, man. Yeah, I, was. I, I must annoy, I really must have annoyed him so much because eventually when Stephen and I were absolutely blitzed out of brains, drunk, yeah. You know, the free drink. I remember going round him and he was sitting on his chair and I put my finger against his chest and you just yeah. shut open to me. Yeah, yeah. Hairy chest. And I said to him, this is really drunk man talk. Your music has touched my soul inside. <laughs> and he just looked at me and he started giggling. <laughs> and he's like, well, Daniel, thank you. That, that is so nice. Yeah. And then I filled up, my aim is true. Album yeah. and said, "Can you sign this? <laughs> sign that. God bless you, Dan. That's wonderful. Uh, so brilliant. That was hilarious, man. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm actually going to see him this year. Um, Are you? He's playing the Glasgow Pavilion. Yeah, yeah. Him and um, Steve Nye. Him and Steve Nye. Yeah. So um, I've looking forward to so that. Many times. Oh, I've seen him before, time. but not for a long time. So um, yeah, looking forward the best, to that. The best times were the the early attractions gigs at yeah. the pool and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. They were great, man. Yeah. Brilliant band. Fantastic. Okay. What about uh, being at a gig where um, it surprised you? You, you saw somebody oh, yeah. and they were better than you thought they were going to be or worse? Or... Yeah. Yeah. One in particular. Go on then. Um, well, quite a few, but one in particular stands out. My brother-in-law used to do some reviews for like the Sunday Meal pop page, okay. live gigs. And um, he's like, ah, um, I'm going to review Devo tonight. Do you want to go? Right. And I thought, Devo, man. I liked him when I was young, but I don't yeah. know if I'd like him. And uh, I said, okay, I'll go to keep me company. And uh, we went along to 
in the, the academy and the goggles to see Devo. Yeah. And I'm so glad I went. It was one of the, it's the top one of the top five gigs I've ever witnessed in my life. Wow. The, the sound was absolutely ear splitting loud, and they went through like a best of set. Right. Everything everything I, I'd heard in them that I loved was in the set, and they yep. were absolutely amazing. And they did little suits on and all that, yep. and the wee yeah, funny yeah. hats. Yeah. And uh, and I think at this time they were all maybe in the late fifties. Or something like that. So they weren't the spring chickens, you know. No. These old guys, and you think they're probably past it and all that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, phoning in a bit, right? Yeah, couldn't have been more wrong. They were incredible. I, I was so glad I witnessed that. Yeah. One of those gigs that's lovely with, with me since. Brilliant. Fantastic answer. Yeah. What about um, what about the first gig you went to with a partner? Hmm. God, I've been to so many gigs with girlfriends before I met my wife. Uh, I went to see 10CC with one of my ex-girlfriends when I was young, 1974. The original that's that's the original lineup, right? Yeah. The last tour they ever done Wow! before they, they split. And I've seen them at Glasgow Apollo and they were great. And yeah. one particular song I thought stood out was uh, I'm Mandy, oh. Fly Me, which was just amazing live. Yeah. But they were great. Yeah. So, how did, how did the night go? Yeah, um, the night went good, but <laughs> one of the worst one of the worst gigs I ever get dragged along to my cousin girl was when I was young was in love with Alvin Stardust, and she said to me, "Alvin's playing the Apollo, and I've nobody to go. We will you go?" And I was like, "Oh Jesus!" <laughs> Alvin you know, yeah. But I went anyway to keep her company, and it yeah. was actually it turned out quite a nice night. You it was know? all right. But it, it wasn't really like going to see traffic or something, like I right. did as well in the times. But did they still have all the leathers and stuff on? And oh yeah, it's yeah. The, the whole the thing. Gear. Glove, no. Yeah, the leather glove. Anyway, <laughs> no. ten cc it, it, sounds a bit more appealing, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> um, ten cc was amazing. Yeah, Who else did I see at the Apollo? I've seen so many great acts. I saw yeah. ELO twice. I saw Bowie twice. Um, craft work, um, human league, just tons and tons of people. Lou Reed, I saw Lou Reed in 1974 with the same band that plays on Rock and Roll Animal okay. live album, which, in my opinion,'s like up there with the best live albums ever released. And um, just well, all I'm going to ask you if your favorite live album, remember, in the end. So, all right, okay, right, hang, well, on, the, hang on to that one, my, right? That might not be my favorite. So would the, um, would the Apollo be your favourite live music venue? It was at the time because it, right. well, basically it's the only one I knew at the time. That and the Kelvin Hall. I went to the Kelvin Hall and I saw Manfred Mann's Earth Band there, which was amazing. Um, there was, with with Paul Jones the, and stuff still in it, right? No, no, they had the big hit. It was Mar Manfred Mann's Earth Band. So they did the big hit with um, uh, just things and stuff. Yeah. Um, Blinded by the Light. Right. And I went along on, on the strength of that album. And it was really good. I was glad, glad I went. Um, do you know there's there's so many there's so many venues now compared to where there was then. Yeah. You know, um, and when I started going to gigs, I was too young to get in pubs. In fact, when I was twenty one, I still couldn't get in a pub. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get a passport to move my age yeah. to get in. It's not a bad so, thing. Yeah, I wish I still needed it. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, like a, 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 a popular or a well-known gig that you'd a ticket to, but you never got to? Mm, I would never miss a gig, but I'll tell you, I never had tickets for a gig, but I'll give you a story. Um, I'm a big Celtic supporter. Okay. Um, so That's okay. I used to go to a lot of football when I was young in between gigs. And one night, America were playing, you know the band America? Sure. Of course, it's no name. Yeah, yeah. Playing the Apollo. And I said to myself, I'm, I want to go to that. You know, I've got a couple of albums in them now. They're great. And, and a couple of my friends are like, oh, come on, just go to the game. Just go with us to the game. And eventually get talked into going to the game. And they're like, oh, you can see them in the next tour. And they never came back for 28 years. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife got me tickets. Yeah. She knew how much I was desperate to see them. Yeah. And uh, she she got me tickets to see them live. The first ever gig in Glasgow after 28 years. There you are then. So, 
I hope you won, the, won, hope you won the football match, did you? I can't remember. Man. <laughs> exactly. See, you should always go to the gig. You right? Celtic, they usually do. <laughs> oh, you're speaking to Morton man here, mate. You're speaking to Morton man. So, well, I know a few Morton fans. Oh, don't. Ian he's a Morton fan. Don't, mate. I'm doing okay at the moment, but that's from, um, yeah. you know, form is only temporary, right? That's right. What about it? Uh, have you been to a gig where you've missed the last bus or train home? Yeah. Silver Threads Hotel, Elvis Costello. Ah, there you I'm go. waiting in the queue outside Bruce's Records, which was then in <clears> Union <throat> Street, the bottom of Union Street. Yep. And one of, one of my ex-girlfriends worked in it, so she was always telling us great records to buy punk stuff that came out and all that. Yep. Um, so anyway, they, they like, we're running a bus through to see Elvis Costello, and I bought tickets, me and my mate. So I'm standing outside Bruce's waiting in the bus turning up, and I see this guy walking up with his wife, and it turns out it's my boss at work. And he said, right. what are you doing here? And I said, what are you doing here? <laughs> said, well, I'm out with my wife, we're going for a Chinese and all that. Yeah. And I, he's like, where are you going? He's, I said, I'm going to see Elvis Costello. And he's yep. like, Elvis who? Yeah. You better be at work in the morning. And I was like, don't worry, Brian, I'll be at work. Yeah. Don't worry, mate, I'll be at work. And of course... The bus was late and getting into Glasgow and there were no buses and we had no money for a taxi. Oh. And it's a long journey for the town centre to Castmill. Yeah, it is a long and one. I never, I never made it to work, so I, was, I got into trouble for it. Oh, but the gig was worth it, right? Yeah, the gig was worth it. I'm still yeah. talking about the gig. <laughs> yeah, well, there you are. Uh, fantastic. Mm. What about uh, what about the best support act you have ever seen? Oh, I've seen a lot of good support acts. Um, they don't want to there was a band called Montrose who supported Status Quo. Right. Um, Ronnie Montrose. And, I remember uh, the name, yeah. It was quite impressive because he went off stage and he left his guitar sitting, making a noise, you know, like, wow, yeah. wow. Uh-huh. We had green light on it and it was flashing around the hall. So, I mean, for a young teenager, that's quite impressive, you know. Yeah. Um, I bought the album after it. Was less than impressed with the album. <laughs> I think, you know, also seen. Um, oh man, who did I see? I saw Ted Nugent supporting somebody. Do you know right. the Heavy Rocker? Yeah, of course. Ted Nugent. Oh no, yeah. I can't remember who it was he was supporting, but I saw Richard and Linda Thompson, folk singers, mm-hmm. supporting Traffic. That nice. was a good one. That's impressive. Yeah, if you go and see Traffic, you know, they did a great band, one of my favourite bands of all time. Yeah. And um, to have such a great support act. Yeah, that is amazing. very impressive. Yeah, very good. Yeah. What about um, what about the gig that you travelled the furthest to get to? Hmm. Man. Did you want any journeys? I've done a lot of journeys in that tour bus, but um, no, yeah, I mean... Do you know, uh, my wife and I went to see Wilco in Edinburgh, does that count, recently? <laughs> it does, yeah. Well, if you're from Glasgow, it does, right? It's, uh... We went to see, I'll tell you a great gig we saw there that I saw yeah. recently, well, recently, been in the last year, uh, Leon Bridges. We went to oh, see right. him yep. in the Usher Hall in Edinburgh. I mean, a lot of people liked the Leon Bridges first album that he, yeah. he came out with. It was kind of like, Sam Cooke, 60s soul music, right? Yep. I prefer the two other albums he's released since then, which are more like 70s soul. Right. And, uh, you know, just, I don't know, there's something about them. Uh, but, so we went to see him, and I was looking around the Usher Hall, in Edinburgh, me and my wife, and it was just full of young people, as in young to me. I mean, yeah. me, probably the oldest person there, Part for me was about 30. Yeah. <laughs> so I felt like an old codger at it. Yeah. But um the show was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. He's he's one of my current absolute favourite artists. Yeah. yeah. I, I need to you listen. Know, I, I, I know about, him, but I need to listen a bit more of him. Yeah. Yeah. People talk about Marvin Gaye and all that. This guy's a modern Marvin Gaye and Stevie okay. Wonder. He's right. so good. I'll check that out. And they re- really Long good bridges. really good sound in the Usher Hall. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, Love. I like the sound in it, yeah. Yeah, I was front row of the balcony for Wilco, and it was incredible, man. Was, yeah. Even up there, the sound was incredible. Yeah, and we it's, were, it's just a great venue. That is a good venue. We were there uh, just last month to see Billy Bragg. And, um, All right. I and supported was, him once. <laughs> yeah, 
there you go. Billy Bragg. He's still knocking out. So yeah, um, it was a, a kind of. I can't remember it was. It was some kind of political thing, and he'd made a, a guest appearance. Yeah. And then um, it was a bandstand at Queen's Park. All right. Yep. yep. Supported him. That was the first person of any note to heard a name that I supported. So. Very good. I uh, give a bit of time for Bragg. And what about, uh, you mentioned about you've uh, the band you saw the most, or the artist you saw the most, Elvis Costello. Yeah. And you mentioned you've kind of seen everybody, you think. Is there anybody that you haven't saw that you're sort of hanging on to seeing? Or, or see I mean, again, I think it might still come. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you a band I really loved since I was a child, since uh-huh. I was about 12, and I missed them. And the, the lineup changes constantly, yes. Uh, okay. I would love to have seen the classic like lineup. 70s mm-hmm. lineups of VS. Yes. Yeah. I missed them. I also missed Genesis with Peter Gabriel, which I'm kicking myself because a couple of my mates saw the last Genesis tour with Peter Gabriel singing. But I did see Peter Gabriel's first ever tour after they left Genesis. Right. Uh, at the Apollo. And he had one of those radio mics. That's right. And nobody, nobody in the days had seen a radio mic. Yeah. Didn't know what it was. So me and my mate are in the stalls, quite close to the front. Yeah. One of my other mates and his girlfriend were up in one of the boxes at the side of the balcony. Yeah, yeah. yeah remember. Peter Gabriel goes missing off stage and up, where is he? And he turns up, he's in the box. Oh, wow. With my mate and his girlfriend are. And he puts the mic over to them to see if they want to sing a wee bit and all that. And she lets out a squeal and he disappears. And like, oh, where is he? So he disappears. And what happens is he left the venue, the side entrance, and he walked away around the front. He came in the front of the pole. Right. And he came down the aisle next to us. And me and my mate were the first two people to get close to him. And there's a song on his first album called Waiting for the Big One. And it was just, they just got to the line, I guess I'm waiting for the big one. And he put the microphone up to us and we both sang it. And that's a claim to fame. Uh, sang yeah. a bit of a song with Peter Gabriel with that That's ball. fantastic. Amazing. Fantastic. Mm. Well, I don't want to upset you on yes, but um, I actually managed to see them a couple of times. But one of them. Yeah. yeah one John them, Anderson. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, yeah. Lucky. Yeah, yeah Anderson was there. Um, I, everyone bar Waitman, actually. Um, the right. old band bar right. so it was really good. I also saw them in the Buggles. Played with them. Oh, yeah. that was that was that was it. Paul, that was an amazing night. You talk yeah. about a mixed crowd, you know. It was, uh, yeah. it was crazy, right? But um, yeah, a lot I'm of sure confused ex yes fans be the very bass. confused. Yeah, yeah. But um, I tell you, that boy can play the keyboards. Um, Jeff Downs. He, Jeff Downs. Yeah. Oh man, they're, they're all great musicians, you know. Absolutely wonderful. Um, okay, so what we got? We've done a. Uh, Guys, you saw the most, absolutely. Hey, what about yourself then? So we ask all the guys this who are actually artists, what about the best gig that you've done as a performer and why? Mm-hmm. Um, Favourite gig that I've done? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've played the Barland five times, but always as a support act. Unfortunately, I never, never got big enough to, to headline it. Um, I think, I mean, I played some great gigs in Japan. We played a... a sh- Shinjuku Arena in front of 15,000 people two nights in a row. We supported you two at the SECC for a couple of nights. Right. Um, Excellent. Supported the Black Crows at the Bannerlands as well. Um, Favourite gig? Uh, I don't even, it's, it's too tough, man. I don't, tough. Don't, don't think I can pick that. <laughs> Do you know, probably the best gig ever, the most productive gig was probably the showcase gig we'd done for Alan McGee in front of him. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Joe Foster, who used to be at Creation as well, um, and our manager, like three of them. And we had to play like a, a gig, you know. He was thinking about signing us and he wanted yeah. to see us playing live, so it was a showcase gig. And what happened is the night before the gig, the guys had gone on the town drinking and all that. And I of said, course. don't don't, don't mess anything up. Yeah. McKee's coming tomorrow. Behave yourselves. And they went into town and, of course, they were steaming drunk. And Stephen, the guitarist, was swinging on this scaffolding somewhere in the, the town. And he fell off the scaffold and damaged his hand. Oh. 
and luckily it was his right hand. But I knew they were up to something because, like, when I met them that day to go up to do the gig, they were all whispering, oh, sh- and then he's listening and all that. And they were all worried <laughs> about me finding out. Yeah. So anyway, I looked over and there's Stephen with a big giant bandage around oh, his hand. Man. I said, see if you've messed this up, mate. Yeah. I'll never speak to you again. I told you, behave yourself and all that. And uh, so anyway, we did the gig. And luckily it wasn't his court hand, but you could see the pain and etched in right. his face when every strum with the guitar. Yeah. And McGee was jumping about the front of the stage going, I want to sign you, come on, come on, yeah. do you want a record deal? All the usual McGee stuff. And uh, so that was a good, that was probably my favourite gig ever. Yeah, and a bit, bit of pressure as well, I guess, for that. Oh, absolute yeah. pressure. Yeah, because yeah. you spent all that time, you know, yeah. trying to get to that point, yeah. right? So Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, at least it worked for you, you know. It did. Yeah, absolutely. It's good fun. Okay, couple to finish then. You talked about a favourite venue earlier, so you you sticking with the Apollo? Or do you want to? Um, do you know what venue I really loved before it burnt down? The ABC mm-hmm. up in Sucky Hall Street. Mm-hmm. To me, that was a relatively clean version of the Barnlands. Yeah. Um, but the Barnlands for atmosphere, you know, great gigs there. I've seen man REM yeah. in nineteen eighty nine was incredible. The Green Tour. Uh, my wife and I got to sit up the back behind the mixing desk oh, and watch them because she was pregnant at the time. But right. um, plus, I'd done some charity stuff with Simple Minds, supporting Simple Minds at the Barrowlands in like the months before. So everybody yeah. knew who it was. And like, oh, you got up there with your wee pregnant wife, best view in the house, and all <laughs> that. Happy so, days, man. But it's great. You know, the Barrowlands, when you saw Oasis there, when, when I was signed to to pop tones with McGee, he's like, oh, you, do you want to go to the Oasis gig tonight? No, I'll put you and Stephen on the door. Yeah. So Stephen and I went up, and it was, it's not even Oasis that made it great, it was the audience. Of course. Because they just, Liam and I just stand there, yeah. as you know. They, they're like statues, they don't, they ain't, you know. Yeah. But the whole place was bouncing, and everybody was singing along with every single word. Yeah. I'll tell you a funny story after, after that. Go on then. We, we went back to the after show party, right, up at King Touch, it was. Okay. So just all the usual hangers on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Johnny Marr was there, I remember. All the Oasis guys and all that. But you know what it's like with these things? Like, people are all, they always want to meet Liam. It's Liam, 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 Liam. And I'd got quite pal with him when I was in the Cosmics, the few times I've met him. Yep. So we were up there. And uh, they're all waiting on him, and he was the last to arrive. And he came down the stairs from the dress room at King Tots, and he swung the door open. There's a surge of people, oh, Liam, Liam. And he spotted me, and he pushed him out of the road, and he came over and gave me a hug. Oh, there you are. <laughs> you, you were all cool, right? You were just cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. I have no idea why, but he seemed to like me, <laughs> honestly. Don't knock it. It's, it's, it's amusing. Every time I meet him, he used to cuddle me. Yeah, and do you get comps for his hydro gigs then? No. Well, <laughs> no. I could probably. I could because yeah. I still, you know, the old internet's a good thing, but I still talk oh, to his brother Paul a lot online. Okay. Right. He's a really cool guy. Yeah, he yeah, is indeed. He's, yeah. He's yeah. got a, a kind of podcast thing that he does as well. And he's got um, got some new stuff coming out, I think, Gallica, hasn't it, with um, John Squires? Uh, Liam, yeah. Yeah. Have you heard yeah. it? Uh, my son's heard it. <laughs> yeah, my son Jack um, told me not to listen to it. So it makes me want to write songs for Liam, but yeah, you know, well, he's, he's surrounded by this group of people that I know. I mean, I'll, I feel like saying him, I'll write you a nice Oasis anthem if you like. It was the Oasis anthem, yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Okay, two tough ones to finish then. So, the your favorite ever gig that you went to? There's two actually, well, I'll give you two, that's fine. Right, number one for years and years was REM at the Barland, 1989. Okay. Get that. Green Tour. It was just phenomenal. I mean, I'd seen them already a couple of times in the bars before, but they were really on this, you know, they were on a wave, a mm. you know, fame wave then. Um, and I never, th- and I wasn't going to this other gig, right? Okay. But my wife being a school teacher, they get, you know, offers of tickets for raffles and stuff like that, for gigs and all that, you know, for charity things for the school. Yep. And one of the things she got in the raffle were two tickets to see 
Paul McCartney. And nobody in her work was interested in going to see Paul McCartney. Really? So she bid she bid fifteen quid for him. Oh. Two tickets from Hamden. And her and I went and it is the greatest gig of my life. It's one of those ones, every song, you know, there's forty thousand people there singing along with almost every word of every song. Uh, I just, I was too emotional. I, I just could not sing. Every time I tried to sing, sing I was almost crying. It was yeah. like, it was a moment. It was like, I cannot believe I'm here. Yeah. Do you know? I think I was at the same gig, Daniel. Would yeah. that have been, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, something yeah, yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I took, I uh, my, my wife and my two sons went, and I wanted right. my sons to see McCartney. Um, yeah. They didn't really, they were a bit young at the time, but, you know, they've looked yeah. back on it now saying, wow, over there. Yeah. They remember yep. the pipe band coming on. Do you remember the Mullock and Tire yeah, and yeah, stuff? They remember yeah. all that. So, um, I also 15, remember fifteen pounds um, for tickets as well, right? Yeah, the the version of uh, something that he did. He started with the ukulele, right? Yeah, or something, didn't he? That's right. And he then did. He was, it was George Harrison gave him the ukulele or something, yeah, is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was amazing. Amazing. Mate. Do you know? I'll tell you another. I mean, I've seen some great gigs. Like Kraftwerk was incredible. You know, and they, they, they had the wee pocket calculator, things like that, singing pocket calculator. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Lou Reed was incredible. Bowie was incredible. I'll tell you that, before you go, I'll tell you my Bowie story. Go on then. So my mates interviewed him about seven times, but um, so I'm at the Apollo, the first of four nights, and I've got tickets for the fourth night as well. So the okay. first night I'm watching... And like the show ends and he goes off stage and everybody's waiting in the encore. And he doesn't appear. Right. And that show's over. Mr. Boy has left the building. Yep. Like kind our of Elvis thing, Elvis has left the building and all that. Uh, so the fourth night, I remember that. And I'm saying, okay, this is the last song. Because he basically played the same set. Yeah. And like, as soon as he was almost finished, I ran out of the pole and I went round the side entrance and his limo was parked outside and there was about 10 people, me and about nine other people yeah. and the door opened and he was there in oh. front of me and I was like that away from yeah. touching him before I bounced or pushed him in yeah, and man. it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it, at our age he's talking no. about span adulation Not but at all. No. I was 19 at the time, honestly and it was like, wow, that's Bowie. No. I'm so close to him. And he looked immaculate, man. His skin was like Yeah. It's hard to explain, but he just he just looked like a star, if you know what I mean. And this would be like late seventies or something. Seventy eight. Yeah, I remember yeah. that tour, yeah. 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 Didn't so see that tour shop after that, but not not that tour. So Yeah. So I got close but Close but no cigar. No cigar. I met Sure Adamson when I was seventeen, and I thought it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. You know, it's just that's what that's what happens when you're young, right? You know. So I, I was on stage with Lanny, but big country once. Oh, don't Bruce. It's another chat. It's I was another on stage chat. with Bruce. Um, I was up at a gig. My mate uh, was in the Alarm. Mike Peters. Mm -hmm. Do you know the Alarm? Of course I do. Yep. Um, so I'm in America. And I'm at the airport in, I think it's Houston Airport in Texas. And we we bit to go before the flight. And I was walking about the airport and I spotted him. I went, oh, I was like, how's it going, mate? And I, I really loved the alarm when yeah, I was me young. Yeah. Oh, you're supporting you too and all That's that. Right. And uh, he's like, oh, I know who you are. And I didn't know he knew, knew, yeah. knew who I was. He's like, oh, I've got your album, Enjoy the Melodic Sunshine. It's brilliant. I love it. And we started chatting. Became pals. So anyway, he was playing a show under Dead Men Walking, and he had the guy right. Kirk, somebody Kirk Brandon. Yep. And the band, and stuff, right? He had the bass player of Sex Pistols. Right. Um, what's his name? Can you remember his uh, name? Glenn Matlock. Glenn Matlock. Yep. And he had a couple other people. Um, he had Pete Wiley, the mighty wow on stage with him. Legend. So. They had a kind of little break in the middle, and I spotted them, and I went up and said to him, and he's like, oh, you need to come up and do a song with this one. I was like, and King Tuck's right, it's packed right. with all these alarm fans and all yeah. that. And he's like, Bruce is coming up as well, Bruce for the big country. Yeah. 
And he's like, it's the small faces song, all or nothing. So I'm in the stairwell, you know, in King yeah, Tut's, yeah. practicing all yeah. or nothing with, with him. Then he shouts us up, man. And he's like, you need to sing into that microphone. And it's the same microphone as Glenn Matlock for the Sex Pistols. Wow. So then I'm going to sing my like, pistol, yeah. He's this man, I've been, I've been a massive punk fan, yeah. you know, from day one, 19, yeah, since the damned and all the rest of it. So a lot of good things happen. A lot of a lot very of good things, mate. A lot of this is a fantastic yeah. story. And give us your one live album that everyone should own a copy of to finish. Mm, Jesus, man. Um, there's three, right? Am I allowed three? Go on, then. Right. Go I'll on. count them down. Okay, I'll do them right. in reverse. Hold on, right. right. Three is David Live, David Bowie, Live at the Tower of Philadelphia, which Classic. I love. Yep. Brilliant versions, different versions of songs. Um, number two, probably Rock and Roll Animal, Lou Reed. Lou Reed. Um, but number one is the James Gang live at Carnegie Hall. Wow. It's Joe Walsh's Power Trio. Yeah. And it's it's Power Trio stuff, man. You know, before Nirvana, basically, it's like Nirvana before Nirvana. And it's like, it's stunning. Every song on it's amazing. And his guitar playing and all that. Fantastic. So that's my number one live album. That's, I've never had any um, James Gang before, so right, sorry, there's, a, no. there's a first, Daniel. Um, that's, that's probably what, my age. <laughs> not at all, mate. Some crackers on there as well. That was brilliant. Absolutely really good. Daniel, yeah. can't, can't, uh, can't thank you enough for your time tonight. It's been really appreciated. Yeah. You're um, welcome. No Daniel problem. Wiley, thanks again, mate. All the best. See you, mate.